everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Selkirk shawl, which you can see here in front of you. This is a easy triangular shawl to work. It has three points. To each point I have added an optional tassel to it. But other than that, it's made up of basic double crochet and single crochet stitches worked in this beautiful stripe pattern. Today for the tutorial I'm going to be using a 100% wool worsted weight yarn. I'm using the Selkirk worsted weight yarn by Fleece and Harmony which is a local yarn shop. I'll be using two colors, uh, two skeins of the color Oyster and three skeins of the color Natural. Each of these skeins has approximately 200 yards in it of wool. You're also going to need a 5 millimeter crochet hook or an H8 crochet hook and a copy of the free written pattern which is on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. Today in the video I am going to be just working a small sample of the pattern for you today so you will want to have that written pattern on hand. So thank you so much for joining me while you're here. Don't forget to subscribe, check out some of the other free crochet patterns. Uh, on this channel it is updated every week. Now one more thing before I begin I mentioned that this is a triangular shawl and uh, the finished dimensions of it are approximately 60 inches from across the long end and 30 inches from the center back down to the center point. The shawl is worked in rows we are going to be starting from the center back of the shawl and then working our way and increasing our row sizes down to the center bottom point of the shawl. So we're starting up here in the center just to give you an idea of where we're headed. So to begin you're going to take your color A and you're going to make a slip knot. You're then going to chain Two. Now for row one, we're going to work three single crochet stitches into the second chain from our hook. There's one, two, and three. You can then chain one and turn your work. For row two, you're going to work two single crochet stitches into the first stitch, three single crochet stitches into the next, and two single crochet stitches into your next stitch. At the end of row two, you will have a total of seven stitches. Chain one and turn your work. For row three, work two single crochet into your first stitch, single crochet into each of the next two stitches, Work three single crochet into your next stitch, one single crochet into each of the next two stitches, and two single crochet into your final stitch. In your final stitch, you are going to switch to your color B. So to switch for your to your color B, Insert your hook into the final stitch on your final stitch of the row. Yarn over and drop a loop. Drop your color A, pick up your color B, and place it on your hook and pull through. We are not going to be fastening off uh, your color A. We're going to keep it attached and we will be picking it up later on in our project. At the end of row three, you're going to have a total of 11 stitches and you should be really seeing this triangular shape come through now. For row four, 
using your color B, you're going to chain three, sorry, chain two, which does not count as a stitch, and turn your work. For row four, using your color B, you're going to work two double crochets into the first stitch. So two double crochets into the base of that turning chain. You're then going to double crochet into each of the next four stitches. Work three double crochets into your next stitch. Double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And work two double crochets into your final stitch. At the end of row four, you're simply going to drop your color B and the loop from your hook. If it helps, you can place a stitch marker in that loop to hold it so that it doesn't pull through. It's up to you. You're then going to return to the first stitch in that row and you're going to, in the top of your first stitch, pull up a loop of color A. So just place it on your hook and pull through. Make sure that the loose strand is flush with that side stitch. Don't worry too much about it right now other than that it's flush because we are going to be working and edging all the way around so we will be working over top of that loose strand. Once you have pulled up your color A, with your color A you're going to chain one work two single crochet stitches into the first stitch. Next, single crochet into each of the next six stitches. Work three single crochets into your next stitch. Work one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. And into your final stitch, work two more single crochet stitches, switching back to your color B in that final stitch. The color B should be hanging down just right beside. You're just going to put it on your hook and pull through. That brings you to the end of row 5. At the end of row 5 you should have a total of 19 stitches. For row 6 you're going to chain 2 and turn your work. You're then going to work two double crochet stitches into your first stitch using your color B. One double crochet stitch in each of the next eight stitches. Work three double crochets into the next stitch. One double crochet into each of the next eight stitches.
and then two double crochet stitches into your final stitch. Once again, pull up that loop a little bit or use a stitch marker to hang on to it. You're going to drop that color A, go back to your first stitch of that last row, pick, or sorry, drop your color B, then you're going to, at the beginning of that first row in the top of the first stitch, grab your color A and pull it through. Chain one. For row 7, using your color A, you're going to work 2 single crochet stitches. And I should say at the end of that row 6, you will have 23 stitches. You're going to work 2 single crochet in that first stitch, single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. Work three single crochet into your next stitch, one single crochet into each of the next ten stitches, and then two single crochets into your final stitch, switching back to your color B in the final single crochet. That should give you an idea of how the increase stitches are worked and how the triangle shape is built. From here on end for rows 8 through to 57, you're going to continue to repeat the rows as we have, uh, continuing to increase our stitch count by four stitches each row. At row 57, you're going to fasten off your color B and you're going to work rows 58 through to 67 simply in color A only. Once you've worked through to row 67, you can fasten off and weave in your ends. Okay, so once you've worked through to the end of row 67, your uh, triangle is going to be much larger than mine. It's going to measure approximately 58 by 28 stitches. So that's 58 stitches across to here and 28 inches across to there uh, to your shortest point. So then what you're going to do is you can fasten off, weave in your ends if you'd like, and uh, or as I've done here actually, I've just left it attached. I've worked a couple more rows in my color A, and you're going to just chain one and turn so that you're working along this first edge towards your center point. You're then going to work one half double crochet stitch in each stitch in your color A, all the way across to that center point. For your edging, when you come across to that center point, you're going to work three half double crochets into that middle stitch and then continue working half double crochets along your other short edge. When you come across to your corner stitch into this corner, you're going to work five half double crochet stitches. So there's one, two, three, four and five and that's going to give you a fairly sharp turn so that you're able to work across this rough edge of the shawl. 
Along this rough edge of the shawl, you're going to evenly work 200 half double crochet stitches. Now you are welcome to change this number of stitches and just work half double crochets uh, as is comfortable all the way across. My shawl had about 200 stitches along this long edge. So you're just going to work the half double crochet stitches all the way across to your next point, to your next corner. When you come across to your final corner stitch, you're going to finish off by working four half double crochet stitches into that final corner. You're then going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Chain one, you're going to work one more round of half double crochet stitches working just as you did before so a half double crochet in each stitch all the way across to your center point. When you come to the center work three half double crochets into that center, work across to your corner in your corner stitches you're working five half double crochet stitches and then half double crochet stitches uh, in each stitch all the way across the long end of your shawl. And that's all there is to working the Selkirk shawl. Again, I invite you to go head over to richtexturescrochet.com and you can get the full pattern there uh, for free. The direct link is in the description of this video, but it is a gorgeous shawl. If you happen to make it, I invite you to share it with me on social media. Be sure to tag Rich Textures Crochet. As always, I love to come and admire your work. So until next time, happy crocheting. Bye. Thank you.